Some men are born to lead. Saurav Ganguly falls into that category without a shred of doubt. And the signs were always there. I led the E-Zone when he was, he, was, he was a member of the side and uh, I was the wicket keeper and he would most of the time feel at first slip. And you know, he would, after each and every over, he would come over to me and give me some advice. And not only with me, I remember uh, with Arun and Ashok with the captain of, of Bengal off for E-Zone and he was just a youngster, that was his first season. He was very open about his comments and extremely forthright about what he felt about um, the planning, what he felt about the, about the opposition, how to get a particular batsman out. An excellent cricketing brain, a natural flair for man management and a drive to win that was so infectious that it could carry a whole team with it. Saurav was everything you could ask for in a captain. I said that he is a very big fighter. When they got a challenge to get the team, they would have to fight against the Indians. They would have to fight against the team. If I got a challenge, I would have to prove it. I would have to fight against the team. I would have to fight against the team. Ganguly also had an uncanny eye for talent and the courage and conviction to back them. Imagine his, uh, he bagged Viru, Viru. All these players were brought by Saravan, Bhaji, Zak, and they turned out to be the match winners now. The strength of Ganguly as a captain was to really connect well with uh, you know, the Harbhajan Singh, the likes of Yuraj, who was very, very young at that time. But I think he gave them enough independence to really. Uh, act or probably to play the way they want. I think that um, independence made these guys a strong character so by the end of the day. Like that, he's found the gap. Saurav won his first series as captain against South Africa and then he and his team did the unthinkable. They took on the invincible Aussies and conquered them. The Prince of Kolkata had gotten under the Australian skin. He had engaged and beaten Steve Ball's legendary team, not just on the field, but also in mind games. Steve Ball brought a sudden self-regard almost to that, to his whole persona that, you know, this is me, I'm Steve Ball. And, and there here was Saurav Ganguly, he said, well, this is me, I'm Saurav Ganguly, I'm not getting runs, but I'm still captain of India and you have to reckon with me. So Ganguly picked up very quickly on what was annoying, what was irritating Steve Waugh. It was a small thing. We didn't realize how much it was. You know, we would sort of say, oh, he's late again for the toss and we'd laugh and some of us would shake our head and say, that's terrible and captains can't be late for the toss. And, you know, who said captains can't be late for the toss if it works? Whatever happened on the cricket field was, was just a way to win games. It was nothing personal. And, and I, over the years I realized that, that, that the best, India played the best when they were up for it. Along with coach John Wright, Ganguly led the renaissance of Team India, breaking old ideas, bringing in new training methods, erasing the tag of timidity and the jinx of never winning abroad. Uh, there were so many things that, that we saw that changed during, um, uh, you know, after uh, uh, you know, John Wright and Saurav Ganguly started working together. There were so many things that changed that, that are still, that are now taken for granted today virtually. If there were a bit of a laid back side, we, we used to let things happen. So we, somebody like John or me or even Andrew who was with us then wanted to make sure that we were awake for all the games and played aggressively. We were a different side once we did that. He became only the second captain to take India to a World Cup final. Beating Kenya in the semis in 2003. Enjoy. Get home. Big game for us here, big game for all these people who have come to watch and probably 104 people, 104 people back home and a win, a win here has given smiles to everybody. Schools were closed, uh, offices were closed for this big game and the way we've played and uh, it's made the whole country proud. Straight up in the air, this should be the cup itself slipped from Saurav's grasp. But later that year, he scored a scorching century in India's tour to Australia. That's what the 50 partnership snaps on the outside. Setting the tone for a series where India fought the world's best team to a standstill. That is beautifully executed, lovely sharpness by the Indian captain. What's the name of the Brisbane? What's the name of the Brisbane? What's the name of the Brisbane? तो उन्होंने प्रूव किया, फाइट की वहाँ पर और हम लोगों को उस खराब सिचुएशन से बाहर निकाला और ऐसे मुकाम पर लाए कि हम लोग सीरीज ड्रॉ कर गए हैं वहाँ। In 2004, Ganguly became the first captain to win a Test series in Pakistan, and with 15 Test wins, became India's most successful captain. One of the best captains of all time. 
Because I think that he has sacrificed his batting for captain's race. Uh, because he, he is such a type of a character. Uh, even in my house, he loves to stay with all our, all our brothers and cousins like this. He, when he goes, he take he, he take with him everybody. But Ganguly had suddenly reached the peak of a slippery slope and the fall, true to his style, was dramatic. A complete and devastating loss of batting form, struggling as captain and the team losing just about every series they played. It was the end of the ganguly right combination and in stepped a new coach, Greg Chappell, and things fell apart. Saurav went public with the fact that Chappell had asked him to step down and Chappell sent an email to the BCCI slamming Saurav Ganguly in the harshest possible terms. When the email was leaked to the media, one of Indian cricket's ugliest and most dramatic saga began playing out. It damaged the whole team. Uh, team. So what Greg was doing was uh, not just unfair to Ganguly, it was unfair to the other players, it was unfair to Indian cricket as well. The selectors were in off him, the board was in off him, and he was able to get away by slagging off an Indian captain in, pub, in print. Uh, okay, it was a confidential email. He was very indiscreet to send that email in the manner in which he did. It wasn't his job to sack the captain. Out of the team, sacked from captaincy. In the space of a few months, the prince had been reduced to a pauper. All what had happened during those one month was a bit of a shock. You know, I still couldn't fathom out why all, all these things happened. And secondly, there was no need for that. Uh, if I had to go as captain, I had to go. And it could have been done in a much, uh, much better way. So many great people leave on a bitter note sliding downwards from lofty peaks to the fate from view. Was this the fate waiting for India's greatest captain? The moment has arrived. The credit is lost.